Okay, so as you requested, I'm going to post the solutions to the Chapter 6 exam study guide numbers 1 through 8. Okay, number one, we're going to identify the solution of the system, and we're going to do this by graphing. So both of these equations are written in slope-intercept form. So to graph the first equation, the y-intercept is 3, so you're going to go up to 3. And the slope is negative 3 over 1. If the slope is negative 3 over 1, we're going to go down 3 to the right 1, and that's our first line. The next one has a y-intercept of negative 1, so you're going to go down 1, and it has a slope of 1 over 1. So we're going to go up 1 over 1, and there's your second line. As you can see, this is the intersection point, or the solution, which happens to cross at 1, 0. And so this answer is letter B. So number one is B. For number two, clearly the multiple choice gives you the solution as a, as a graph of the intersection of the two lines, but you don't have to solve it that way. You know all three different methods. So you could use elimination if you want to solve for X and Y, and then you can choose whether it's A, B, C, or D based on your solution. Or another really smart thing to do when taking tests is just test the answers. So in letter A, the answer that they give you is negative 2, negative 1. In letter B, in choice B, the point or the solution they give you is negative 2, positive 1. Option C, they get, oops, sorry, I wrote that backwards. That was C. This one is B. So, sorry, option B was positive 2, negative 1. And option D is positive 2, positive 1. Instead of even doing any work here, since this is a multiple choice question, you can just go through each of these options and test the values of x and y. And when you test the values of x and y, you would see that option C is the correct answer. If you substitute negative 2 in for x, so negative 2 for x for both of these equations, and 1 for y for both of these equations, you would have, end up getting the correct values. 4 times negative 2, negative 8, plus 5 times 1, which is 5. Negative 8 plus 5 gives me negative 3, so that solution works. For the second equation, it should also work if that's going to be the correct answer. Substitute negative 2 for x, you get negative 3 times negative 2, negative, or excuse me, positive 6, 2 times 1, 2. When you add those numbers together, 6 plus 2, you get 8. So you can see that the answer is letter C. But just to show you how to graph these, I will go through the solution to number 2 by graphing. The first equation in number 2, to put it in y equals mx plus b form, you would subtract 4x from both sides, which would give you 5y equals negative 4x minus 3. You would divide both sides by 5, which gives you y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 3 fifths. So graphing this, our y-intercept is negative 3 fifths, which is just before the negative 1. Our slope is down 4 over 5. So you end up right around here. That's your first line. The second line, which was written as negative 3x plus 2y equals 8, I could rewrite that as 2y equals 3x plus 8, just by adding the 3x to both sides. Now if I divide by 2, I get y equals 3 halves x plus 8 over 2, which is 4. And we can graph this line. Just go up 4 to the y-intercept. And then your slope is 3 over 2. So up 3 over 2. And you're right about here. And that's in this line. And hopefully you can see that those two lines where they intersect happens to be at option C, which is negative 2, comma 1. 
So that solution occurs at negative 2, comma 1, right here. So again, the answer is C, by graphing them by hand. Number three, the easiest method is substitution, because you already have what y is equal to. y is alone, and it equals 4x. So that means I'm just going to replace my y here with 4x, and our new equation looks like this. 4x equals 3x plus 6. Solve for x. So we want to bring the x's together. Subtract 3x, subtract 3x, and you get 1x equals 6. In other words, x is 6. Plug that back in, and you get y equals 24. And that option is letter D. For number four, hopefully you can identify that we're going to be solving this uh, system by elimination. And you can eliminate the y's very easily. Since they're the same sign, you want to subtract the second equation. So 2x minus 3x is negative 1x. Negative y minus negative y eliminates or goes to zero. Negative 5 minus negative 6 is really negative 5 plus 6 which is just 1. If negative x equals positive 1, then x equals negative 1. You can already identify what the answer is on your multiple choice just by the x value. The answer here is a, negative 1 comma 3. But just to show you where the 3 comes from, you're going to plug the negative 1 into one of your equations. So let's just say the first equation. Multiply 2 times negative 1, and then let's solve for y. So we have negative 2 minus y equals negative 5. Add 2 to both sides, and you get negative y equals negative 3, which makes y equal to positive 3. So that's how we get letter A, which is negative 1, comma 3. In number 5, the easiest method here is substitution, since you already have x alone. x equals 5y minus 4. So I can substitute this x with 5y minus 4. You could also rewrite the equation and use elimination as well. But let's go ahead with substitution since most of you need more practice with that. So I'm going to rewrite that second equation using substitution. So I'm going to take negative 4 and multiply by what I'm substituting for x, which is 5y minus 4. Continue to write the equation as is, and now solve. So when we distribute, we get negative 20y plus 16 plus 20y equals 16. Now what happens here, you can combine like terms, but notice that the negative 20y and the positive 20y cross out. And you just end up with 16 equals 16. What does this mean? Well, this is true. Since it's a true statement, we can say that our answer, then, is infinitely many solutions, which is letter C. So the answer is infinitely many solutions, since we got a true equality statement. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number six doesn't give us any obvious method to use if we had the choice, but it tells you in the directions to use elimination, and that probably is the best method, honestly. So if we use elimination here, you have to pick which variable you're trying to eliminate. Well, neither of them have the same coefficient, if you notice. So we can choose whichever one we want to eliminate as long as we multiply the equations by a number that will give us the same coefficients. So I'm going to choose to eliminate the y's. And if I want to eliminate the y's, they have to have the same number in front. So this number in front of the y here has to be the same as this number here, which means I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. And the bottom equation, I'm going to multiply by 9. So now if we rewrite both equations with our multiplication, the first equation would be 14x minus 18y equals negative 32. The bottom equation, when you multiply by 9, would be 81x plus 18y equals negative 63. 
So now that you see the y's have the same coefficient of 18 with opposite signs. So now we can eliminate. So adding these equations together, 14 plus 81 gives us 95x. Negative 18y plus 18y eliminates. And then if you add negative 32 to negative 63, you end up with negative 95. Divide both sides by 95, and x equals negative 1. Since x equals negative 1, you can already identify that the answer is b, because that's the only one that has an x value of negative 1. But of course, you could go back and check by plugging in x to get that y would equal positive 1. All right, the last one I'm going to do is number 7, just to give you a quick refresher on how to graph inequalities. Sorry that the pages were a little bit out of order. Um, but number 7, graphing this inequality, we first want to look at this as if it's the equation y equals 2x minus 5 and graph that line. So we know that this means the y-intercept is down at negative 5 and the slope is positive 2 over 1. Now that we have our two points, connect them to make your line. But I just made a solid line, which is not what we want for the inequality. So you have to go back and look and see what your sign says. My sign is strictly less than. Since my sign is strictly less than, I'm going to make this a dotted line. Now I need to choose how I'm going to shade this. Since it's everything less than y, it means everything below. So I'm going to be shading down, but just to check where my shading is, we always want to test if 0, 0 is part of the shading or not part of the shading. So if I test 0, 0, and I plug it into my inequality, we would have 0 is less than 0 minus 5. So 0 is less than negative 5. This is false. So we do not want 0, 0 to be a part of our shading which, like I said before, means that we're going to be shading below the line. So it would look like this. All right, I hope this helped you with the study guide. Good luck on your studying. I'll see you tomorrow.